Okay, so our second part of our notes today, um, we're going to be working with 3-5, working with sets. We're going to do the second part. Some things we did not fill in last time, I believe, are the empty or null set. Um, something you want to fill in there. All that means is there are no elements in this set and you would write it with empty bracket, brackets or the no solution symbol. Um, so sometimes you'll get out something where nothing works and we're gonna call that the empty or the null set. Um, and we're gonna start with problem three today and that is finding subsets. So finding, a, what a subset means uh, is that it's part of, the, part of a larger set. So here, this is actually quite a bit easier than the first part. It says, what are all the subsets of the set three, four, five? Okay, so what we do here is we list every combination of three, four, five here. Okay, so the subsets, it means like if you uh, went to a table and there were three, there was a option of getting threes, fours, and fives, and you could get any combination. What combinations could you get? Well, you could go and you could get one, three, one, four, and one, five, and that could be your combination. Or maybe you don't want all three numbers. You could get just three and four. You could get just three and five. You could get just the three, or I'm sorry, not just the three, we already used the three, just the four and the five. And that would be all the combinations of two that you could get from the table, all right? What else could you choose? You could maybe just choose to get the three. You could just choose to get the four, or you could just choose to get the five. Or maybe you don't want any of those. You don't want any of the numbers. You could choose to get nothing, and that would be your empty set. These right here are all the subsets. What that means is just literally all the combinations of three, four, five you can possibly get, and order doesn't matter. Like if you had listed five, four, three, that is not different than listing three, four, five, right? So this counts as the three, four, five. I, I'm not going to switch the four and the three here and count that as a different one. So, so there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight subsets total, eight total. And that's how you list the subsets. Okay, so let's do this uh, um, some more. So flip your page here. And there's a last part about this, okay? And it's going to talk to you about complements of a set, okay? So a couple of new terms here that I want you to underline, okay? So it says working with sets, you call the largest set you are working with the universal set, okay? So in our example down here, we're going to be talking about chess. So the universal set here is all the chess pieces, all right? In this case, you have all of the pieces. Ooh, that, that is hard to see there, all right? All the chess pieces. All right, so the complement of the set are all, and let's put this here, all the elements in the universal set that are not in the set. And it's denoted by A with a little... Um, apostrophe on it, and it's called A prime here, okay? So I'm going to explain this as we go, but this is how you write it. So it says, notice that this symbol right here is, and I'm going to stop using yellow, sorry about that. So this symbol right here means subset Okay, so this says A is a subset of the universal set. So this kind of shows you, right? If you have the universal set of something, let's say you have every, the universal set right here. Let's make that everyone in Michigan. Okay, let's, let's th think about it that way. And A is a subset, right? So that's inside of there. So we'll make A um, students at Kville. Right? 
So everyone, all the students at Kellogg'sville live in Michigan, but that's not everyone that lives in Michigan, right? So this is everyone in Michigan. These are students at Kville. So what they're saying is the complement of the set, that's this guy, that's everybody in that lives in Michigan, right? That does not go to Kellogg'sville. So in this case, right, A prime, the complement of the set would be um, everyone that lives in Michigan but does not go to Kellogg'sville. Okay, um, and so that would be our example here. Now, let me show you an example of like kind of what you're gonna see and on the test. Um, you don't have to be familiar with chess to know um, what to do here because it's going to list for you what each of these guys can do. So in chess, these are the directions the king can go. Here's the queen's directions, the bishop, the knight, the rook, and the pawn. Okay, so it says the universal set U equals king, queen, bishop, knight, rook, pawn. Those are all of the chess pieces. And A is the set of chess pieces that move side to side. What is the complement of set A? So if A is the set of the pieces that do move side to side, the complement means the ones that do not move side to side, right? All right, so we got to look on here. So what we write that, we would say the complement of A is equal to, and we put our bracket in, so which pieces in our, our universal set do not move side to side? Well, it's not the king. It's not the queen, the bishop, right? The bishop only moves diagonal. How about the knight? Yep, the knight moves side to side, so he doesn't count. The rook moves side to side. How about the pawn? Yep, the pawn does not move side to side either. And so this would be our complement of A. Our A, like if we had wanted the actual set A, that's all the ones that do move side to side. So that would include the king, the queen, the knight also moves side to side, and the rook. Okay, so that's the second part of 3-5 that we have to learn, okay? Now... Um, I'm going to give you a couple of help tips for the homework today in the next video if you would like to watch that.